This is The Thriving Dentist Show with Gary Takas, where we help you develop your ideal dental practice, one that provides personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Welcome to another episode of The Thriving Dentist Show. I'm Gary Takas, your podcast co-host. Today's episode is titled Team Building Tips. Uh, I'm going to share lots of useful information you can use uh, in your practice to uh, uh, have a, a, a better result at team building. And let's face it, uh, team building is more important today than it ever has been. And hopefully this episode will be useful for you uh, to get everyone uh, rowing together in the same boat in the same direction, helping you become more productive, helping you deliver better service to your patients, and better representing your vision of your practice. Excited to share this episode with you for sure. Hey, before I get to this episode, a couple of quick announcements to make. Um, recently, uh, we did uh, a five-hour summit uh, done through RIDA. RIDA is titled, uh, is an acronym uh, that stands for RIDA, Reducing Insurance Dependence Academy. Uh, we did a five-hour summit. It was held in late October, and it was all about the steps that you can take to successfully reduce insurance dependence in your practice. We had over 20 authorities as part of that summit covering every different aspect that you could possibly imagine. Well, we decided to make the replay of that summit available to all of our Thriving Dentist Show listeners. If you'd like to get a copy of that, uh, it's five hours. You can listen to it in small bite-sized pieces, of course. Uh, but just go to ridareplay.com. Again, R-I-D-A-R-E-P-L-A-Y.com. The second announcement is we have a new guest uh, uh, in our top clinical tips, uh, Dr. Jared Johnson, and he's going to talk about hypoplastic ways to treat hypoplastic six-year molars. So if you see children in your practice, uh, you're going to really enjoy this tip from Dr. Johnson. With no further ado, here's Dr. Jared Johnson on how to deal with hypoplastic six-year molars. Hi, it's Dr. Jared here, and this week's tip is on hypoplastic six-year molars. So we see this quite often in kids these days, and it can be really challenging to deal with. Ideally, when the tooth's uh, erupting, we'll be able to get a sealant on the tooth. You may want to choose to use a glass ionomer sealant if you're not able to isolate well. Unfortunately, some of these teeth come in with cavities, and they're very difficult to deal with. One thing to consider may be if the kid's uncooperative to go ahead and do a SMART technique where you put SDF on twice and then a glass time or restoration. If you've got a really hot tooth, I've had kids where I will put SDF on every two weeks until I get that tooth not to be sensitive and then I can go ahead and get the kid numb to do the restoration. Sometimes we'll be restoring these with crowns uh, and then sometimes unfortunately the best option for these teeth depending on the growth and development of the kid may be to extract the tooth. This is a lot more predictable in the maxillary arch than in the mandible. Uh, we ideally want to have those wisdom teeth appearing on the panorex. And then in the mandible, you want to make sure you don't have a lot of root development on the second molar. Once you get past that furcation developing, you're going to get more tipping uh, into the space rather than the mesial uh, migration that you'd like to see. So I hope this tip is helpful on dealing with the hypoplastic six-year molar. Welcome back to the Thriving Dentist Coaching and Action segment. This is Naren, your co-host. I want to take a minute to thank our guest contributor for that wonderful tip. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. The topic today is team building tips. Gary, um, as we kind of are getting ready to wrap up the year, I know there's a few more weeks to go. Uh, it's a great time to talk about the elephant in the room, right? Many of us, especially since COVID, Many practice owners have struggled with teams. Uh, of course, some have done extremely well, but many have struggled. Uh, wage challenges, inflation, you name it. Uh, well, even, even something as simple as uh, there's a lot more movement happening yes. in, in our country. People are moving, they're relocating. Uh, people are leaving, not, not because they're not happy with their job, but because they're choosing to live in another part of the country. Uh, there's just a lots lots of moving pieces right now. Pardon that pun, <laughs> but a lot of a lot of moving pieces right now. 
Yes, exactly. So this topic of team building tips where you're going to go through specific strategies that practice owners can literally implement tomorrow. And I know many of this comes from uh, now close to 44 years of coaching and, uh, you know, real life experience you have had helping literally thousands of practice owners. Well, what does it mean? Let's start with the definition. What does it mean, um, you know, when we talk about team building? Um, well, I think uh, all of your uh, goals uh, we have seven very specific goals for, for each one of our clients. And uh, the fourth one is to have a high performance team that you truly love and enjoy working with. That's goal number four. Uh, have a high performance team you truly love and enjoy working with. And of course, uh, by the name of the podcast, The Thriving Dentist Show, uh, our goal is to help our listeners developing thriving practice. I, I've often been asked by our listeners, what does it mean to have a thriving practice? And what that means to me is it's a it's a practice that provides personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Personal satisfaction means you're taking care of patients you enjoy, surrounded by a team you love. Professional satisfaction means you're doing more of the kind of dentistry you like to do, whatever that is. And financial satisfaction is a little more self-explanatory. Uh, it's being rewarded financially, uh, fairly, and handsomely for your care, skill, and judgment. So let's go back to that you know personal satisfaction taking care of patients you enjoy, surrounded by a team you love. And team building should not be something that just happens like we check it off our list. You know, oh, we did that. We did it. Team building needs to be something that is ongoing, is constant, is never ending, and is never finished. It, it, it's like the painting crew that paints the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, there, there is a crew uh, of 10 individuals, uh, 10 painters, that their job is to permanently paint the Golden Gate Bridge. They work their way around the bridge. We all know that Golden Gate Bridge, and it's painted that international orange color. Yes. And we probably know, unless you're out west, you, unless you're not out west, you might not know this, but it's a very harsh environment with the wind and the salt uh, and rain, um, and it's brutal on paint. Um, and there's a permanent crew that paints the Golden Gate Bridge. And when they work their way around, get every, and then they get back to where they started, guess what? Where they started needs to be painted again. And they go around again. Um, and so that's how you need to think about team building. It's not something like, yeah, we did that, we're done. It, it's something that you have to continually work on. One comment I want to make, Aaron, that maybe we'll give our listeners a different way to think of this. Anytime you add a new team member or change a team member, the composition of your team changes every time. Because now, for now, well, let's say we, we're growing and we want to add an assistant. We have an assistant. The day the assistant joins the practice, it's a new team. Now, does it, because with that particular group of people, we're now learning how to work together. Does that make sense? Yes, Gary. It does make so sense. So it's not like, oh, we have, yeah, we have a good team. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we did that. We did that in 2019. We did team building. No, it's not like that at all. So I want to share six very specific team building tips that I think our listeners can use uh, to uh, have a high performance team. And, and what is a high performance team? It, it means to me, that's where doctor or doctors, if you have multiple doctors in the practice and team members are all in the same boat, rowing in the same direction. Doctor or doctors and team members are all in this. I like that imagery. They're all in the same boat, rowing in the same direction. Well, there's some practices around the country that they're not even in the same boat. We've got <laughs> some that are on the beach and we've got some that are swimming the other way. <laughs> of course, that won't apply to any of you listening to this, but maybe you have a friend that has a practice like that, <laughs> right? Uh, all right, so here's some uh, six team building tips that will help you achieve a high performance team. Uh, I'll number them to remember to, to cover all of them. Uh, number one, Lead with a strong vision. What's your vision? Can your team members tell you what that vision is? What is it? Is it big enough? Is it bold enough? Is it something that gets people excited about coming to work every day? What is your vision? Uh, high performance practices that, that have high performance teams. Uh, there's a leader in that practice that leads with the strong vision. Hey, Naren, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, you uh, own a... Uh, uh, a, a marketing firm, Equa, E-K-W-A, uh, that helps Dennis uh, uh, in the marketing arena. Uh, you're the founder, you're the CEO. What's your vision? 
Thank you, Gary. Uh, of course, thank you for putting me on the spot. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Equa, as you said, Gary, we are a marketing firm and we specifically specialize in helping our clients dominate Google, dominate Google SEO. Why do we do that? We know Google ads are at least five to 10 times more expensive. PPO plans are 30 times more expensive. So definitely dominating SEO and being among the top 5% of practice owners who's getting 95% of the free traffic is a good place to be. It'll position you amazingly well for 2024. So that's what we do. This vision has been, this focus has been there for us for the last 15 years plus. And currently I'm so proud that 95% of our clients never leave us. But I've been thinking more about this and I think um, the vision that I think I want to really focus on 2024 and really fine tune is this idea that we have small practices, uh, you know, perhaps doing a million dollars. We have medium sized practices, perhaps doing a million and a half to two million dollars. And in many cases, we even have practices doing three, four, five, six, seven million dollars, the massive mega practices. So, regardless of the size of your ambition, size of your dream, we want to be able to drive those patients the lowest cost way possible, definitely built around SEO to your practice. So um, we have uh, designers, we have SEO people, we even focus on landing pages, right? So where when people go there, are we good, doing a good job in convincing them to pick up the phone and call? We are even getting into looking at calls and providing insights on how the calls are being handled. So pretty much an end-to-end -end solution in helping practice owners get the right number of patients they desire every single month. I know your practice gets more than 100 new patient calls a month, and I want to be able to do that for every single client getting. Well, thanks. I, I knew I was putting you on the spot. Uh, I, I will t tell you as a, a customer of yours, uh, Life Smiles is a client of, of Equa. Uh, we're thrilled with the way you and your team support us. And clearly, um, your vision is uh, inspiring your team to um, get all the moving pieces, uh, you know, all the wheels and, and spokes uh, working together to produce the end result for your uh, uh, for your clients. And by um, the way, if anyone wants to um, take advantage of, um, you know, uh, like the, uh, something we are making available to our clients or prospective clients is this uh, free marketing strategy review. It's our gift to you, uh, equa.com slash MSM, just to see where you stand when it comes to your digital marketing, ekwa.com slash MSM. I'd encourage any of our listeners to do that. It'd be time very well spent. All right. So we lead with the vision. That's number one. Uh, more more technique. I'm going to get more granular as we go. Uh, another tip, number two, I'd really encourage you to do twice a year an all-day team meeting, all hands on deck. Uh, one of the complaints that I hear um, from offices all over the country is that we don't have good com communication in our office. We don't know what's going on. I'll hear that from the team members. Oh, this thing happened over here, and I had no idea it was even happening. Um, and so all-day team meeting, here's the concept. You do one maybe at the beginning of the year. Maybe we do that in, in, in the early part of the year. Um, the morning, eight to noon, would be a working session, a working team meeting, half-day team meeting. No patients that day. No patients. And we line out the initiatives, the goals. What's your BHAG? What's your big, hairy, audacious goal for the year? We, we line those out. And we work on those. Maybe we do some in-service training. Maybe we've added some new technology. We need to train our, our team members on it. Uh, but there's any number of different topics that you can do during that work session. Then have lunch together. Have a nice, maybe you go somewhere and have a nice catered lunch brought in. And then in the afternoon, you go out and do something fun together as a team. Um, if you'd like to get, I, I teach my te team members how to do this. Uh, I like to pick three team members, maybe three people that don't normally work together. And we give them a budget and have them come up with an activity that we can all do together. Uh, it might be Top Golf. Top Golf is in many communities around the country. That's a lot of fun. Uh, it might be iFly, the simulated skydiving. It, it might be, um, you know, a day at the lake. You just relax the lake, have a picnic at the lake. It might be horseback riding. Uh, it, it might be uh, an escape room experience together. Uh, you know, it, it, it might be that you choose to go on a hike together. Uh, there's any number of different ways you you can do that. Uh, one of our clients recently did this and it was a big hit. They discovered a restaurant in their town that only is open for dinner service. But what they do in the afternoon is they do private co cooking classes. And they did a private cooking class for the class, for the entire team. Uh, but it's the idea of bonding with your team, getting together with them, other than just chasing them down the hall with a sticky note, 
And now we get to know our team members. Uh, do one at the beginning of the year and then one mid-year, maybe June, July, August. Mid-year, you can check your course against your goals for the year, check your progress, make mid-course corrections. But same thing, nice lunch together, go out and then uh, do an activity together in the afternoon. Uh, so that'd be my tip uh, number two, uh, all day team meetings, a couple times a year. Um, number three, individual check-in meetings with your team members, individual check, check-in meetings. Uh, everybody knows that the most important commodity any of us have is our time. Right. And doctor, when you spend one-on-one -on -one time member, time with a team member, you are showing the patient that they're uh, the the employee, the team member, that they're important. Right. You, and you're not just lip servicing it. Yeah, yeah, you're important, Maria. You're important, Maria. You are demonstrating with your time that that person is important. So individual team, and it can be a 15-minute check-in meeting. Uh, you could, one of our offices has a Starbucks next door and they simply walk, a doctor uh, grabs a team member, they walk next door, uh, have a drink together at Starbucks. Uh, if you do that, one thing I encourage you to do is start with a personal check-in. Maria, how, how are things at home? And hopefully you know a lot and uh, you know about your team. You know, if we have a relationship-driven practice, that's where we know our, 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 our patients' names. We know their spouse's name. We know their kids' names. We know their dog's name. We know their hobbies. We know their interests. We know what's going on in their lives. We should be able to do that with our team members as well. Do you know her kids' names? Do you know their ages? Do you know their faith? Do you know if they have a dog? What's the dog's name? Do they have other pets? Do they? Is it a multi-generational family? Do they have others living with them? What challenges are they experiencing? So do a personal check-in. How are things? And also say, you know, how can I help? How can I help? Later, do a business check-in. How are things at the office? What resources can I provide? How can I help? Personal check-in meetings. Very, very, very important. Uh, number uh, four, um, take CE courses together. You know, the whole, everything with CE got kind of messed up because of COVID. And some offices haven't gotten back on the CE bus. Um, but man, taking CE courses together gives you common experience, uh, gives you an opportunity uh, to experience new education, inspiring people. Uh, you can make a combination for budget reasons. You could do uh, in-person CE combined with some virtual CE that you do together. Uh, but how committed are you? We talk about continuous learning and being better as a practice, but is it lip service or are we actually doing it? So I, I really believe the concept of taking CE courses together is a, is a great way to come together as a team where we're all in the same boat, rowing in the same direction towards commonly defined goals and objectives. Tip number five, and if you haven't done this already, initiate a practice book club. Choose some books uh, that you're going to read together as a team, um, one at a time, and then we're going to talk about those books together as a team. Uh, we're going to talk about what we learned and more importantly, what we can apply in our practice. Uh, just some suggestions uh, a, a really good book would be Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, maybe the all-time best people-building build, book, uh, you know, being uh, person-driven, uh, being relationship-driven. Uh, I love uh, anything Stephen Covey has written, especially his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a really great book. You can pick lighter things to read. Uh, but maybe you can ask the team to suggest what would be something that they've read recently that they think the team might might benefit from. Um, and what we typically do is we'll assign a reading assignment. They could also listen to it if they're more of a listening person. You provide the book in physical form, electronic form, or audio audible form. Uh, and then maybe we have a, a, a reading assignment for the next week. And the next week we get together during a lunch work hour. Uh, we bring lunch in. They're on the clock. And we, and we talk about the book. We talk about what we can apply in our practice. But book club's another way to get everyone rowing together in the same direction. And, and finally, I'm going to bring this back kind of to tie it in, piggybacking on uh, the individual check-in meetings. Truly get to know each and every one of your team members. Truly get to know. Do you know that one of your team members 
is experiencing some challenges with their teenage son right now. Some truly challenging situations. Do we know that? Do we know? Maybe another one of your team members is taking care of an elderly parent right now. How's that affecting their lives? Get to know your team members. Truly know each and every, you know, really develop a work family, a work family. You know, the, the best high performance teams truly function as a work family. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes families are dysfunctional. Sometimes work families are dysfunctional. <laughs> but if we truly care about each other and, and we support one another, you can really align yourself to have an incredible uh, high performance team. Well, there's six uh, suggestions. I'll recap those really quickly. Number one, lead with a strong vision. Uh, number two, consider the concept of all day team meetings as a way to uh, have common experience and uh, uh, common uh, working together towards goals. Uh, number three, individual check-in meetings, individual check-in meetings. How often should you do those? Um, I'd like to do those every quarter, every quarter. Um, you might start every six months just to get something started. But, you know, two or four times a year, have individual check-in meetings with your, with, with your team members. Uh, number four, take CE courses together. Whenever we take CE courses, we ask team members, if we're going, say, to a conference, is to, over the next few team meetings, we're going to ask the individuals to do a five to 10 minute oral report on what they learned in one of the sessions they attended at the conference. What did we learn and what can we apply in our practice? Uh, number five, book club. Um, start a book club in your practice. Maybe over the course of the year, you read three or four books together. Uh, and over time, that'll make a big difference in your common language and the, in the, in the things that you know together, the things that you studied uh, together. Um, and finally, number six, truly get to know each and every one of your team members. Think of it as developing a, intentionally developing a work family. Well, Niran, I, I went ahead and uh, took a sneak peek at the questions that were submitted. And we've got some great questions coming up. Let's hit pause on our coaching and action segment and get on to those great questions. Welcome back to the Thriving Dentist Q&A segment. This is Nareen. Gary, I have four questions for you. I'm going to number them and go, go through them one by one. Uh, for those of us who are just joining us, the topic today is team building tips. Question number one. My practice overhead is higher than ideal, especially regarding my team member compensation category. I'm concerned that if we start doing more meetings and team building activities, we will have less productive time and my overhead will just increase even more. Your thoughts? You know, so I guess uh, putting that- Thank you, that's a great question. Yeah, like if I were a business owner, what he's saying is team building takes time. And can I use, can I afford that time? That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to try to give you a different perspective on that. Um, we have required reading uh, among my uh, clients, among our coaching clients. Uh, and one of the books that's required reading or you can listen to it, um, is the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, written by Stephen Covey. Um, if you will adapt those seven habits, the difference this can make uh, in, in your business is, is just phenomenal. And habit number seven, Stephen Covey defined as sharpen the saw, sharpen the saw. That's habit number seven. And he used an analogy. And we have to go back over 100 years uh, to really understand the analogy of sharpening the saw. But imagine 100 years ago, and imagine that your career is you're a lumberjack. You get paid to cut down trees. And imagine that you have a dull saw. You, you know the teeth on your saw. And back then, the technology was a two-person buck saw. Uh, we've all seen it in the cartoons. You know, one, one, one person's on the other end of the saw. One person's on this end. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. That's the saw. Okay. It wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a chainsaw like we have now, but imagine your saw is dull. So you could have two perspectives. One perspective is, Hey, I've got to cut down a certain number of trees every day um, to keep my job. And I can't take the time to sharpen the saw. And so you just keep gnawing away at the tree with your dull saw. The other perspective is in order to be, for me to be most effective when I'm actually using this saw, 
I need to take the time to sharpen the teeth so that when I'm using the saw, I'll be that much more effective. And the same concept applies to your practice. Sometimes dentists are so busy working in their practice that they don't spend any time working on it, working on it. You're so busy working in it. You know, I got to produce, 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 produce that you're ineffective because you haven't taken the time to sharpen the saw. So the way I would ask you to think about this, I'm going to ask you conceptually to think about this, is one perspective is I can't afford to take the time to do that. The other perspective is I can't afford not to. And I would suggest uh, world-class dentists with world-class practices adopt the latter approach. I can't afford not to do that for sure. Thank you, Kenny. Great question. Um, yeah, I appreciate the, the candor in asking that question. Yeah, I guess I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, we have 250 people, like 400 something clients. And um, yeah, I think um, you build a culture and a team and then the culture and the team takes care of your patients or in, the, in our case, clients. If you don't have that, you don't have a business. So it's like, you know, this is the most important thing, like having an awesome team that can't wait. I mean, I like to use Life Smiles as an example. Every time I talk to somebody and I read those reviews and you have like, I, I don't remember the exact count, but it's 1,200, 1,300 reviews and they are all like love letter reviews, right? These are not forced. These people are not working. Uh, I'm talking about the employees or the team members at Life Smiles. They're not working because the boss is looking over their shoulders or uh, somebody is going to beat them up or give them a carrot, a bonus. They're doing it because they want to. And that's a great team. And, and if you have that great team, it's like magic. I mean, you are not carrying the weight by yourself. You can't jump out of bed and come to work every day because you're just going to have so much fun. Your well, it didn't happen the same thing. It, it yeah. didn't happen accidentally. It happened intentionally. And I don't know a, a single team in the in the business workforce that came together accidentally. Uh, they, they had to be developed. They had to be um, uh, nurtured. It had to be created. It had to be um, a time and effort uh, put in sharpening the saw. Sharpening the saw. Thank you, Gary. Let me go to question number two. I would like to take my team members to more CE courses. However, some team members cannot travel due to their family situation. I'm, I'm guessing they have kids or you know other, other reasons like that. How can I include those team members who are not able to travel? Well, great question. And it's real. Um, it is something I've encountered in my coaching work. There are situations for uh, you know individual reasons why a team member is not able to travel. Uh, but keep in mind the CE that doesn't have to involve travel. We could do something virtually together. You know, we could find a course that we uh, study virtually. Um, there's lots of uh, really great uh, resources available. One, one of the resources that, that uh, I really love when it comes to um, online virtual CE um, was developed uh, by uh, my great friend, Dr. Leanne Brady. Uh, some of you may, may know Leanne. She's the uh, CEO and clinical director of the Panky Institute. Uh, she's developed a great community called Restorative Nation. Just go to restorativenation.com. Tons of CE right there. Um, and, and you could just do that together, you know, in your office, you could participate in that together. Mary Osborne, uh, Mary Osborne, another great friend in ministry is, uh, one of their uh, curators and she's got lots of content on that site. Uh, and you can participate in CE, uh, for those that aren't able to travel by intentionally seeking out resources like that. There's other sources as well, but there's a couple, uh, you know, there's a good place to start, uh, for sure. And just recognize them, try to be non-judgmental about it. You might look at it and say, I don't understand why you can't. And be careful about casting judgment. Meet your team members where they are. Uh, you may not know the full story. Meet them where they are and support them where they are, uh, for sure. Thank you, Gary. Let me ask you question number three. I really like your suggestion of scheduling two all-day team meetings each year to include team building activities, to include team building activities. What are some specific activities we could consider? 
Uh, let me do this is the part that I, I, I wanted to share with you in the Q&A segment. So here's some things that my clients have done. Uh, we've helped craft these, these ideas. And uh, keep in mind, think of it like a smorgasbord. Pick the things that you like. Um, most communities today have uh, a wonderful recreational activity called Top Golf. And Aaron, do you have a Top Golf facility outside of Toronto? Are you familiar with Top Golf? Uh, uh, I, I know mini golf, but what is Top Golf? Is that Top Top Golf is a really a, a 21st century uh, version uh, of uh, uh, practicing golf that involves games and uh, beautiful setting, great food. Uh, it's, it's in every major city in the U S um, mm -hmm. and it's just a fun way to spend a couple hours together with your team. So top golf would be a, 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 a great example. Um, another one is I fly. I fly is simulated skydiving. Yeah. Again, we have that stick the stuff, pick the stuff you like. Okay. Right. Uh, simulated skydiving horseback riding. If you're in a community that has access to outdoor space, team members love doing horseback riding. Uh, you could just choose to go on a hike together, find a really cool area to go on a hike together. Um, another one, uh, if you're near a lake, near a reservoir, you might be able to rent a boat, spend a day on the lake together. Uh, we did one uh, uh, with one of my clients that was a big hit. Uh, there is a restaurant in town uh, that is only open for dinner. And what they do during the afternoon is they give private cooking classes. So this big dental office was able to reserve the entire restaurant for private cooking, private cooking class uh, with the team. Uh, by the way, the team members absolutely love this. They thought that was uh, um, amazing <laughs> that they got to do that. Uh, Naren, are you familiar with uh, escape rooms? You familiar with? Yes, the, I know my the kids escape? love them, Gary. I, I'm not a big fan of escape rooms because my mind doesn't work <laughs> the way my kids' minds work. But uh, well, they escape love rooms it. can be fun. Uh, yeah. We did that at Life Smiles. We did. Uh, do you like uh, escape rooms, by the way? Like, do you no, yeah, I love it. I you love, love it. it. Okay. Um, the escape room that we, the escape room game that we did, we divided into two teams, a Dr. Paul team, a Dr. Tim team. We each had, um, an hour, exactly 60 minutes to get out, right. uh, of the escape room. Both of us, uh, uh, accomplished it. Both teams made it out, um, in the 59th minute, uh, and, uh, Dr. Tim's team made it out 20 seconds earlier than Dr. Paul's team did. It was fun. It was a fun thing to do, uh, together. Uh, escape rooms. Um, and, you know, any, any activity that, you know, bowling, there's uh, kind of modern versions of bowling out there today. Bolero is a brand here in the United States that make bowling fun. It's not like your grandfather's bowling alley. You know, these are, these are actually a lot of fun with lighting and, and music and lots of different things like that. Um, so it's just a few things that you could do. Give your team members, you know, pick three team members, uh, pick three people that don't normally work together, give them a budget and let them pick something to do and go out and spend something two or three hours together. Um, make it, make it where you have an opportunity to interact with one another, because that's what we're hoping to accomplish here in the team building is interacting with our team members outside of the work environment. So you probably don't want to go see a movie together because there won't be any interaction. You, you want it to be an activity where you're interacting with one another and, and maybe things they wouldn't normally do. They wouldn't normally have access to. Um, uh, you know, one other uh, thing that uh, a client did recently is, are you familiar with um, a disc golf or Frisbee golf? Aaron, are you familiar with that? You know, you know about the yeah. Frisbee, right? Yes, I, I am getting it. Yes. And instead of golf with clubs and a ball and, and, you know, green, um, there are these baskets that represent the green and you throw these discs. Uh, had some fun with that. Uh, they re really, a lot of these team members had never done anything like that. And it was, uh, it was a good time together. Uh, Go-karting. Uh, another, act I, I keep thinking of these. Uh, uh, one of my clients had access to a go-karting track uh, in their town and uh, they participated in go-kart racing. They actually did uh, some heats where they would, uh, you know, the winner of the heat would advance to the next round and they made it a, a fun little competition with each other. Um, cool things to do. Thank you, Gary. Uh, last question. This is question number four. I have taken my team members on CE trips in the past, but I have not really felt what we received lasting results from this investment. 
and it may have been partially a result of not having the best team members. However, I now have a very strong team. How can I get better return on this investment? Oh, what, a, what a great question. Um, and, you know, um, I have heard that in the past with clients that have said, hey, I've done this. I'm not sure I've gotten a good you know, return on that investment. Um, and I would suggest, uh, maybe, maybe as indicated in the question, maybe it was a team members you had and they just weren't you know, interested in learning and they weren't interested in coming back and applying the information. But one of the things you could do is you could set expectations right from the beginning. Uh, when I've had clients that said, okay, we've never traveled together as a team. How do you recommend we do this? Here's my suggestion. I, uh, most conferences or meetings uh, will have various sessions throughout the day. And maybe you have a requirement. Let's say it's a conference um, rather than just a CE course, but it's a conference. You might say, okay, uh, you're expected to attend the conferences in the morning, attend sessions in the morning, and the first one afternoon, the first one in the afternoon. Then we'll get together and have lunch together as a team. We'll, we'll find a good place to go. And we'll have lunch together. Um, and, uh, you know, then we will go out together and do something in that city. We'll go out and do something together later in the day uh, together that it will include dinner. Uh, you know, the activity will include finishing up with dinner, uh, you know, that evening. So set the expectations, let them know what's expected. Uh, one thing that you can do is ask each team member, ask the team members to scatter throughout the conference. Not everyone go to the same course. So scatter to the different uh, topics and different speakers that they're interested in. And in your team meetings following the conference, it might take a month or two to get through them. Have each team member give a five to 10 minute oral report on what they learned in that session, what they learned. Make sure that they finish up their oral report with, and what we think we could apply in our practice. Kind of like we do with book club. Talk about what we learned in the book, but maybe more importantly, what we can apply in the practice. Do the same thing with these conferences. Because now they they know the expectation is, hey, we're spending, we're investing in your education. We expect to bring back information that we can apply in the practice. And now all of a sudden, instead of just being this abstract concept, going to a CE course, it now has some direction to it, has some boundaries to it, has some sidelines, and has some expectations that are set. And I think that by itself might be part of what would change you know, just going to a CE course to going to a CE e course with some intention. Does that make sense, Darren? It does make sense. Yeah, it can make all the difference in the world. Well, as we wrap up today, uh, first of all, some thanks are in order. Uh, thanks, Darren, for co-hosting this, uh, this episode. Um, I also want to thank all the work that you and your team members do at Equa to help doctors master the world of digital marketing. Um, you know, I know we've been the beneficiary of that at LifeSmiles for seven years now. It's been seven years since we started working with Equa. Uh, I started referring clients uh, to Equa about six years ago and have seen the results repeated time and time again. If you'd like to learn how to master the world of digital marketing, uh, I'd encourage you to set up a marketing strategy meeting uh, with Equa. Uh, you can schedule that meeting by going to Equa, E-K-W-A dot com forward slash uh, M-S-M. And that stands for marketing strategy meeting. I also want to thank all of our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you here at the Thriving Dentist Show. If you haven't done it already, go on iTunes and write us a review for the Thriving Dentist Show. That'll help more dentists find us. On that note, thank you for the privilege of your time. Naren and I look forward to connecting with you on the next Thriving Dentist Show.